Hey guys, we are back. I bet you all thought they finally got rid of that annoying blonde chick that paints on the TV stuff. I'm here. I'm back for Christmas. So we're going to do a fun Christmas painting today. We're going to do the Grinch holding a little Christmas ball. You may have seen it before, but uh, it's just kind of a whimsical, fun little painting. And I did, did it large for you all. You could do it a smaller canvas and sit it on an easel just for the season. But I wanted you guys to kind of see this, and I want to show you some little tricks of the trade, starting something new if you're not an experienced painter. Um, one thing you can do is chalk on your drawing instead of doing it with a pencil and, and all that because you see a lot of lead, and if you're not really experienced, you're going to use an eraser a lot. When you chalk it on, this is your eraser. I sort of started uh, drawing it, and I wanted to show you how the chalk works. It's I painted this canvas black. Our background's going to be black, and I think I'm going to make it uh, go home and do a poly over it so it, it kind of is glossy because this one's kind of matte, I noticed. But I'm just sort of, you know, chalking in the Grinch's hand, and it'll come together. Now, y'all are seeing it at, you know, the whole thing here as we go. So bear with me. I may use my little, I am going to use it. See, this comes off just like that. And it's just so easy. You just blow it a little bit and you're back to square one. There's his little pinky. Here is this finger. He's got three more. Here's one that comes out and down doing a real light touch with this chalk so you don't bear down and I want that finger to be kind of soft and here is my third one. You know his hands are all cool and furry and grinchy looking. I hope you're having a good holiday and I hope you get the opportunity to play a little paint or be creative in whatever it is you do over the holidays. It's a good time of year to do it. Once, every, once Christmas is over with and you get all of your chores done. He is holding a little Christmas ornament. Now, here's my little eraser. And I'll just kind of get my edges a little more sharp like that. The red Christmas ball. Let me make the top of it. Sometimes I just paint in my, my drawing and not really draw it, but just use a paintbrush and get it in. But I want to show you this technique with the chalk. You can cheat and use, you know, the lid or some kind of a round surface to get your, your ball kind of round. I'm just eyeballing this. Here we go. We're going to have some real bold contrasting colors in this. This is the, I love a black background. It makes all of your colors just pop. And they actually sell canvas now. I've told you this before, but they actually sell it black. So you don't have to paint it. Now, his hand is kind of archy like this. And then here's his little wrist. And it comes down and he's got, of course, his Santa fur on. There we go. Once again, I'm going to use my little eraser. Erase this line. His Santa fur comes around this way. And I'm just, I'm going to make it a little fuzzy with the paint. You'll see that in a minute. But let's just kind of get the little fur on here. And then this part is red. There we go. It's kind of drawn now. Now, you don't want to spray your chalk. You might want to blow off your little excess pieces, but um, that's kind of the way it, it works, like this. We'll make this kind of fuzzy. I'm using this morning a uh, <clears throat> paper plate as my palette, but let me give you a good idea. This is something that, for carry-out foods, especially with oil paint, guys, these are expensive. Don't throw them out. You can use these for your paint palettes and just put your paint in here, especially oil, it'll keep it wet for days. 
and then just shut it like this and it keeps it airtight. And you've got a pallet that you would pay a lot of money to buy that and cover it in an art supply store. So save your plastic carryout pieces. They're really good for, for artwork. All right. First thing I'm going to do, I think, you should start with your background first. We've got that finished. I am going to do, um, let's go ahead and start the green. And I think I've got the brushes I need out here. I've got a whole bunch. And one thing too, I'll reiterate again, you are only as good as your tools are. If you don't have really good tools to work with, your painting's not gonna be that great. So make sure your tools are good when you get started. His hand has got a lot of different colors in it. Primarily, it's, he's kind of a limey green. I wanna do a little white though to blend in to get a highlight. And you can see I use these apple barrel for my acrylic. They work great for murals. I have to have a lot for a mural. So these are big enough to use for a mural or a larger size canvas. You can go buy expensive tube acrylic like this. They work well too. But these apple barrel and these craft paints work real well for acrylic paintings. Okay, I'm gonna make him dark first with my green. Back in here, he's kind of dark. Now you want him thick enough so that you can see him. I want these colors to go pop on that black canvas. So here we go. I'll darken it up as I need to. And add your water as your blending medium. Get rid of those canvas holes. Next time we might do something a little more intricate, but I wanted to do something quick and fun. You're probably on your way somewhere, so you don't have time to sit and watch this. But um, hopefully this will relax you a little bit as you watch. Look here how these colors just kind of blend together. I'm gonna darken this because it's an underside of his hand. And actually, y'all, I got lazy and I should have developed this picture, but I'm looking at it on my phone, which you can do that. You know, just pull it up, enlarge it, and just paint something off your phone as a reference. Making the under part of his wrist a little darker. I want to do my brush strokes kind of messy because he's a hairy creature, the Grinch. Doing a really bright white and yellow acrylic. Now, I also want to do a little turn on his finger, on his thumb. I'll show you that in just a minute. These uh, canvas holes are pretty deep, so you've got to really work on getting them covered. And you do that by adding more paint. Green, green. Now as we get down to the end of his finger, let's just let that paint brush just flow away like that. go. He's starting to look grinchy. I'm just going back and forth like this to make him kind of look sort of hairy. I also want to make a little turn in his thumb. Do that with a shadow. So I'm getting my black and making this part just a little darker. This is a good brush. It's sharp, but it's wide enough to cover a lot of space. It's not angled, but it is um, nylon, which is great with acrylic, I think. All right. Once again, we want to show a little anatomy right here. This is where his wrist kind of turns. I want it to be, I put my black on one easel and my lighter colors on another so they don't get mixed up and you just end up with gray. I'll tell you another creature you want to put on the end of it or another plate is red. Red will follow you around. If you get red involved in your other paint, forget it. Red just takes over. Here we go. Let's get some of this done. Just. Swish him back and forth and making him look kind of hairy. I think that's going to be what's going to make this cute. He's got a little 
crook right there. Make sure that that's sharp. I'm dipping into my white, yellow, and my green. Here we go. Let's add a, make a few of those little hairs get involved in the black up here so you can see. There we go. Really, this would be cute sitting around in a den on an easel if it was smaller. Um, it would add a lot to your Christmas decor. Doing a highlight on this side of his little hand. Can you sort of see the movement and the hair a little bit just by swishing back and forth? You have to do it anyway to get rid of the canvas holes. So let's just go ahead and make him radical. I'll show you another little um, tip with acrylic while we're is this uh, gloss fluid medium. This is a product they sell in art supply stores and it would be the equivalent probably to linseed oil in oil paint. Um, this is a Liquitex product but you can put this on your palette and it makes your paint flow a little better, your acrylic paint. This is water-based so you can't use it with oil. I'm going to add it to this green and let's see if it doesn't help a little bit with, yes, see how it just flows a little bit quicker and, and better. Your paint doesn't just stop. It helps it kind of like a linseed oil would for oil. This is, it's really good. If you're going to do portrait work too, this flow medium really helps with portraits. Helps your skin tones blend together, etc. They make everything now. If you're an artist, you have everything at your disposal. It's a whole lot easier than it used to be when the old masters painted. They were really masters. Here we go. Now you want to make sure your paint covers your chalk. And it might flake off a little bit, but you can just blow it away if you need to. Let's get dark in here to show a little joint. Once again, that kind of blended in. I'm going to get a little more joint there. And your lights and your darks are what separate the men from the boys in painting. Here we go. It just makes it look more professional. Um, it helps your painting have depth and dimension. So make sure you're not afraid to use lights and darks when you paint. Here we go. Getting into my light again. I'm going to try to cover up those chalk lines. Got to make sure he's hairy enough or he won't be grinchy. I'm going to bring out a few strays because you know the Grinch isn't neat. You know he probably doesn't bathe as he should, etc. So we want to make sure he looks kind of gnarly. There we go. Hope you all don't live with the Grinch. I don't. I'm so thankful. But you know his heart did grow, so he's probably a good person now. Here we go. There we go. That's looking more grinchy. Let's make this finger real <clears throat> nubbly. Here we go. And I'll probably end up working on that a little more after we get the red on our Christmas ball. Let's make a few more strays on this. There we go. Now, get his other finger going. Look, he's coming along. Just quick. The light source should be coming this way on this painting, so we want to make sure <clears throat> that the tops of these fingers get the highlight they should get right here. If your light's coming here, this side will be light and this underneath part will be darker. So I want to get my light source here. There we go. Here's another finger top. Isn't the chalk the bomb though? So easy. I mean, you can chalk on, you, they make colored chalk, you know. So if you're doing a white canvas, 
you can always um, use pink or blue chalk instead of lead. That's what I do a lot. There we go. Now I see an area that I changed as I painted. So, at, well, I might make that just a big knuckle. There we go. I'll just make that kind of a larger knuckle. This little pinky goes out and it's got a little teeny weeny hair there. You can tell my vision's going, I get right up on top of it as I'm painting. Now let's get a little dark and do some dark underneath to show some depth on these fingers. You don't want it too black because your canvas is black. They'll disappear. There we go. Oh, look, he's got the cutest Grinchy hand. There we go. There we go. Here's our knuckle again. I keep having to go back and put that knuckle back in. It keeps wanting to fade on me. A little darker green down here. I'm still seeing some chalk. So we may, after it dries, get that paper towel and just wipe it off. I don't want to add paint just because we have chalk lines there. There we go. Underneath, darker. Fray that little finger out. Now let's get into our bright yellow and green again and go on top again. Let's make his hand really bold on top. Make this finger real green and grinchy. This one too. I'm gonna do a few strays on this finger too. There we go. Those strays are cool, they kind of make it. A few strays there. Now, he's got a little knuckle right back here. And really, the pointier we can make his little joints, I think he looks more authentic. Now, I'm going to get my brush and just kind of make him hairy. Do that by going back and forth. There's actually a lot of color in this green. <clears throat> I'm just using yellow and white and black today, but looks like my art reference, there might be some more color. Now let's make the top of his hand real high lit up through here. I'm still dipping it in this medium, this flowing medium. And it also gives it a little bit of a shine or a gloss. Sometimes acrylic paint can get real flat real quick. Now it dries quick, acrylic does, so you, want, you have to work kind of quick with it. Look at his hand, isn't that cute? This would even make a cute little Christmas present for somebody, maybe a kid. Or somebody that's real grinchy that you know. There he is, all right. Now, I'm gonna let that rest just a little bit if I can, it's awfully fun. Let that rest a little bit, clean this brush out really good. Find another one and let's start with, uh, <clears throat> let's do the white, the Santa Claus white. So I've got pure white here on this plate. This brush may be too frayed, we'll see. And we wanna just do the edges here of his fur. Yeah, you see how the, this brush is doing this. It might work though for the fur. I am so mean to my brushes. I really need to do better. Usually, instead of cleaning them good, I just go buy another one. Isn't that awful? I recommend you should clean your brushes really well when you're through with them. It saves you money and time and energy and everything. But I've been painting so long that I've kind of gotten sloppy about that and I shouldn't be. Now, let's get down under here. 
One year I made a floral arrangement with my leftover dried up brushes. I just stuck them in an urn and I had paint brushes everywhere. It was really cute. I had to put them some use. There we go. Now, this is gonna come in handy for this fur, this old frayed. I'm gonna add just a little black, but you don't want green in this. This just needs to be fur. I'm gonna have to layer up that white to cover that black background. Because that black's wanting to show through. Okay. I'm gonna add some shadow to this. So we just get a little bit of black, add it underneath <clears throat> his hand, or he would have a little shadow. There we go. Be careful if you get into your green, <clears throat> make sure it's dry because if you don't, you're going to have green in your fur. And you're going to have to layer this white. This black is wanting to suck it up. Now, I'm going to leave that alone just a minute. And we're going to deal with Mrs. Red. I'm going to tell you about Mrs. Red. She takes over. I'm going to move my green and white for a moment. And I'm going to give her her own plate. She's real bossy. And... To be honest, I'm not sure if that one's red enough. Let's try, is it the same thing? Yes, it is, okay. We'll see if it is. Let's get it on the little Christmas ball here. Find the right brush. I think this one's good. It's an angle brush. It's not real sharp, but it's smaller. Now, oh yeah, we're gonna have to layer it up. Sometimes black canvas will just take that paint and suck it right in. So we'll have to layer this up. You know what I'm going to do, guys? I'm going to add a little bit of this bold yellow to it. And it might make it just a little orange, but it'll prime it just a little bit too. There we go. Make this a little bolder. Here we go. I'm not a huge orange fan, and we do want to keep this painting red for Christmas, green and red. Yeah, you see that black coming through? Glad we went ahead and started on that. It'll give us time to let it dry a little bit. Now, don't get it on your Grinchy finger. Be real careful. Let's get one layer of red on. Got to make it round, so you're going to have to touch right there at the edge. Careful as you go in your circle. There we go. I think I am going to add just a little bit of a darker red to this too. This is almost kind of a terracotta, but we need a little, a little more. We're going to mix these two together and see if that helps. Yeah, I think that does turning my brush sideways just to get a lot of paint on that Christmas ball. T, what else we're going to do is add a little glitter to it at the end. And that helps it pop. Now we're getting it. Any color though that you do on this black, it just really makes it jump out at you. Getting real close to my finger, but not into it. There we go. Turning it sideways and getting that excess paint off my brush. There we go. Now, I'm going to let, ooh, let me tell you something else about red. When you put it with your water, don't swash it around because it takes over. 
Um, <clears throat> while that's drying, let's get inside the Grinch's coat. It does have a tiny little bit of red in there and black. Want to make sure that this looks inside his coat. So we had, it's, um, we'll put the color in here. There we go. And while we're doing dimension and getting some shadowing in here, I want to go ahead and I want to add a little more dark here. Get my white palette back out. Paper plates are the bomb, folks. If you've got an art studio and you can leave, and I do have one, but if you can leave your paint out, you can get, you know, things you can buy, uh, easels to put, and palettes to put your paint on and cover them, et cetera. But if you are a traveling artist and you do murals or you go from place to place, paper plates, paint palettes, all that are the bomb. They really help you can throw them out when you're through. need to dry red blow it. it should take minutes for your acrylic to dry now my green is almost dry enough to erase my chalk edges but I may wait till the end you just want to make sure you don't want to have to redo let's make this real fluffy Now, getting a sales call on my phone that I'm looking at. So just hit decline and move on. There we go. Now, there's also a little <clears throat> ornament topper on this red ball while we're waiting. I'm going to do it in kind of a yellow ochre with some white on it. Let's get a smaller brush because it's a little small piece. So I'm going to use this little small nylon. I'm going to add a little bit of black to it. And this is something I really didn't draw. I'm just going to kind of draw it with my paintbrush. There we go. Add a little tiny bit of white to highlight it. You want to be able to see it. And lots of times, guys, I will put my hand down on my canvas to secure it. A lot of artists will use a bar and they will put their hand on that bar to secure your hand so that you're not wobbly and your lines are straight. Just put your hand down, put your pinky down to secure your hand on your canvas as you're doing small, minute details. There we go. There's a little hook loop right here that his little hand is holding and I'm going to do just a little bit of white so we can see make sure I'm straight there we go there's our little nylon piece and make sure we see that you see all those chalk lines we'll get rid of those shortly Once again, your highlight is to the left, so I'm going to highlight this on the left side. And I'm going to use that leftover paint up in here. Just give his little Santa, Santa fur some color. Fray the edges out so he looks furry. Keep an eye on your art reference. If you don't, you'll lose your way. If you don't keep an eye on the art reference, it will not look like what you're copying which can be good if you want it to look a little more like you, but I like to, for it to look like what I'm painting. Now, let's go into 
while we're letting that Christmas ball dry, his sleeve. And it's very red also. I'm gonna get a little bit bigger brush. There we go. <clears throat> My paper towel right here beside me. There we go, lots of paint on here. Get his sleeve real red. And the brighter the color on this black, the more dynamic your picture is going to be. And one thing about the Grinch, he likes to be seen. Now this doesn't have any fray, this is solid. So let's make sure our line's straight. Cool. A lot of paint, you wanna make sure it's not gonna drip. Just kind of layering it up, making it real solid. There we go. All right, I think we're ready to start working on our Christmas ball again. It's had plenty of time to dry. I'm gonna add a little okra to it just to prime it some. Make sure it's solidified and we wanna do highlights on it. There we go. I'm really throwing the paint to it. Because this is the star of our show, really. The Grinch's Christmas ball has got a hole in it. Okay, sorry, but it just does. So we wanna maybe see if we can't put a hole in that Christmas ball. Now don't worry a whole lot about, I'm seeing some areas where the black's coming through. We're gonna be highlighting and dimensionalizing it anyway, so that's gonna work out just fine. We lucked out actually. But now acrylic paint, if it's not dry and you add more to it, Sometimes you can pull it off. It's kind of funny. You think, oh, I can't paint with uh, oil, it's too hard. Acrylic's actually a harder medium. There we go. Now, let's put this black hole right down here. He deliberately put this Christmas ornament with a black hole on somebody's tree. That was Grinchy. Now I'm making my edges all kind of messed up where it has cracked with the edge of my paintbrush like this. And to make sure that that hole is defined, you want to highlight <clears throat> some of the bottom of it with a white down here to show maybe the inside of that paint, of that uh, Christmas ball, I mean. Like that, okay? So you can sort of see a little ledge there. Now, while I've got white going on, I am gonna change brushes, but let's go ahead and do a highlight if we can, if it'll let me, right here. Really strong highlight right there. Don't you drip. There we go. Strong highlight here. And you want to rinse your brush in between because you're going to get red on it. And then there's another highlight here. And they may look kind of like a white blob or kind of just, but when you step back, you'll see that it's more of a highlight. 
Now I am going to add a little bit of a white highlight on this side. And another small one over here. Okay, let's let that dry. <clears throat> While that is drying, we need some more red on his coat. So we're going to add another layer up here, smaller brush, more paint. Because you can see how that has blended in. We want it solid. There we go. We want that Christmas ball to be all shiny. So that's why I added double the paint on it. You see me, I'm always going back to look. It's Sometimes it's good to get up out of your seat, walk away from your piece, and see what it needs. I do that all the time. Actually, walking completely out of the room, <clears throat> come back in and look at it from just a brand new, I've been out of the room for a while perspective. You'll see things that need to be changed. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of black right here to show the shadow of the Grinch's finger on that Christmas ball. And that helps it look a little more realistic also. And you think something like this wouldn't take long, but really and truly there's a lot of little angles and things you need to get right. And hurrying through a piece doesn't make you a better artist. Really and truly, your professional, really good artists take time on their pieces. Quick is not good. There we go. Just kind of showing some shadow there on that Christmas ball. Um, actually, I think it's got enough shadow down here on its own. I was going to add a little bit, but I think it's good. Now. I'm going to get back into my green and I'm going to Grinch up his finger just a little bit. All right, get my little Grinchy palette right here. It's already dried some of it. And a little bit of water and we want to add some hair right down here. There we go. Add some more high lit hair right up through here while our little Christmas ball's drying and I'll add a little bit of uh, glitter to it. You can't have too much hair on the Grinch. Let's do just a little more here. Here we go. The more that I put on here, the better I like it. The more hair, the more highlight, the more brush strokes, the better he's looking. Oh yeah, make him real dynamic. If you're gonna do it, do it big or stay home. There we go. See all this drama? Let's add a little hair here, a little more hair here. There we go. Getting grinchier all the time little highlight up in here, right where his fold is. Darks and lights. Don't pick up your red brush and put it on here because it'll really mess it up quick. If you have to get a new one, get a new one. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Now, let's try to blend this in. Add just a little more dark in his bend. Right in here. There we go. A little more dark there. Little more dark here. It's adding to the drama. A little more dark in here. Now, let's go back over the white a little more and then I'm adding glitter and we're just about done. I'm glad my producer Brandon is back. He has been a great producer and I've enjoyed working with him. We're real lucky to have him on this station. He's patient and he uh, seems to really enjoy his work. Here we go. Don't you drip. There we go. Adding a little bit more fuzz. There we go. Afraid to get in the red. I'm just scared to death to get in that red. There we go. All right. Now. But do you see here how the red has just, it's almost streaky. And that's just because that it is a mean, it's a mean little critter. I'm gonna add a little bit more to this one area. I'll tell you what, oh red, it can be so. Sometimes if you add white to red, now every time you add white to red, it's gonna turn pink. So you have to be careful. Use yellow or something, but it helps prime red so that it'll stay put a little more. This one's been really a stinker today. I'm gonna try again. Here we go, add another layer of this and see if he'll stay red. So like I said, acrylic paint, believe it or not, is a little harder than oil. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try I think we're dry enough. I'm gonna get the very edge of my paper towel, like this, make a little point, and I'm gonna go in here and get rid of these little chalk lines. Okay? Be careful as you're holding it. Wad it up in your hands so that it doesn't make a mess. There we go. Get rid of these chalk lines. It's almost like erasing your lead it just comes off so easy and quick. There we go. That helps a lot. Chalk is amazing. Chalk's really, really helpful when you're doing murals. All right. There we go. Pretty cute. Now, your craft paint also sells glitter paint, which is so much fun. I'm gonna, and now it's a mess too. I'm just gonna tell you, if you, oop, there, there it went. It is a mess. If you get it somewhere, it is glitter everywhere. I personally like to put a little bit of glitter. I'm still a Christmas card person, and I like to put glitter in my Christmas cards. When they open it, it goes everywhere. It makes everybody mad. But it's a lot of fun. And it's all Christmassy. You know, everybody needs a little glitter on their outfit. Now I'm actually getting into the bottle. Look at this. It's probably not dry enough, but I'm still going to do some glitter on this ball like this. And just put it on there to make it look Christmassy. And it adds an awful lot to your painting. There we go. I tell you what a lot of people do too, is they flick snow on their paintings, which is a really cool technique. Maybe I'll show you that if we do a winter scene. You can flick it with your paintbrush or a toothbrush and the snow just goes everywhere. And that's pretty cool. Maybe, maybe we'll do that next time. Now, I like to see it. So I'm gonna add a little thickening here. Not all over the red, just on the edge here. adds makes it real Christmassy 
and it is an acrylic water-based paint, so it'll dry quickly. You may have to reapply it if you store this somewhere, but there you go. Now, I think my red is dry enough on the edge up here. I'm going to take a chance, guys, and I'm going to make his little coat a little more furry. Isn't that glitter, the bomb? I just love it. I think it's so cute. Here we go. Need a little more red right down in here. Nope, that was Chansey. There we go. It just needed it. I get a little more furry. Ta-da! There's your Grinch picture. Thank you all for joining me here at the Art Corner, and I hope you have a Merry Christmas.